order filled. All right, speculators, let's fire up the TDG PTR Pro Trade Room for our Fed Day Funday afternoon session. Hope everyone kept uh, all the profits from this morning, although maybe they were modest, maybe they were great. Um, also streaming over there on YouTube. I don't know if it's come up yet, but uh, if you guys want to check that out over there, sometimes it takes a while. Every time I'm saying I'm going to educate myself a little bit more on the delay and how to do all that on YouTube. But anyway, it should be streaming on YouTube as well. I'll take a look at that in just a little bit. Uh, I think everyone's oriented from this morning. If there's anybody that's here uh, brand new and has not been through what we're about to do, in uh, about 12 minutes, there'll be a policy statement. The algos, of course, will read that instantly. And then uh, there'll be a press conference about a half an hour later. Sometimes we get a lot of uh, movement that's sustained. Other times it's just a really quick of a blip reaction. And then uh, we just sort of sit on our hands. Uh, I am essentially flat in all of the prop programs and just have one, sorry, three positions, four positions here live. Uh, short, a little bit of Dow. Uh, then I have this ZN position that's been in my face for a bit, but uh, working its way back up. Working my way back to you, babe. So what I am going to do is rest in order here. This will not be fun if we get filled, but, uh, you know, got to do what you got to do. So we're going to go here and here. Uh, I am short the ZF and the ZT, so that won't be fun if it screams the other way because, you know, you want everything to work. You want it to drop down and cover my hedges, then get long a little bit more. Let's see. We put some in right here. Order submitted. Nope. It says you can't do it. Not going to do it. Don't have enough money left to do that right now. So we'll just have to wait and see. I could take some of this Dow off, but uh, we won't do that for right now. Also connected to Trade Evate and to Take Profit Trader. We're working on three evaluations there. We got our little Top Step X going on over here where I will be resting in orders at kind of that structure level. Uh, obviously, that could get violated to the upside or downside very quickly and will be long or short. Just the NASDAQ real small. Got the replicator on over there. Uh, let me just go back over to YouTube real quick and see if I can see it here or if it's streaming. Uh, I don't see it yet, so I don't know what the deal is with that. Seems like I should see it. Oh, there we go. Eight people watching. So let's come over here so I can... There we go. Eight people watching. So let's come... Let's mute that. Now I've got the chat going on over here. If you guys want to go over to YouTube, it's right here for those that are in the room. Not really sure why you want to watch it in two different places, but if you give that a thumbs up or if you have to switch over, let me know. Also, if you want to see my very poorly framed camera, yes, I know it's poorly framed. Let me actually see if I can uh, point it down a little bit. I don't think I can because this, no, there we go. That's just how it's going to be. Deal with it. Uh, sound is good, but no picture. Uh, here in the room, uh, Al, no, we got picture, so you just need to refresh your screen or whatever. So make sure it's good to come in on, um, on a Chrome browser if you can. And if you're not seeing anything, uh, then you need to hit the little refresh up there, or log out, log back in. Uh, we got the screens going. Everything rocking and rolling. My goal for this session, um, when I'm not singing 80s, uh, 80s songs, is to do my best on a little bit of teaching and education if possible. Uh, I wouldn't suggest that anyone should have the expectation that they could learn all of these strategies or anything at one time or in one session here. But what we got going on, let me bring it up here on Trading View is essentially we trade two strategies. They are predominantly mean reversion, although you can modify them in other ways. Let's look at it on the S&P here. Chart on the left is the range trader, which is a 30 minute volume profile chart. And then the chart on the right is called stay in your lane, which is a chart that is derived from 
VWAP bands, two standard deviations from price. And as is sometimes indicative of what we get, the calm before the storm, if you will, look at how beautiful the lane is. This is why we call it stay in your lane. This lane is right now on TradingView as an example. So it's not going to take much to move us significantly one way or the other. What would be great is if it moves both ways and the other and we stay between these uh, volatility bands. The challenge there is it's very unlikely that that will be the case because the distance between these bands is just 13 points and that's not even 25% ATR of the expected range today. So we're going to get some more we're going to get some more uh, uh, money trees for MNQ. Uh, I don't use 9 by 1 anymore. I'm almost exclusively 11 by 2. 9 by 1 is going to be pretty squirrely and pretty fast moving. So you might want to go 11 by 2. I know some people are even up to a little higher than that. So keep that in mind. Yeah, there you go. Not a lot of people know Operation Mind Crime. Give that man a discount, Brad, and I mean it. Not not like a major discount, but you know, give him a discount. We we need a guy that knows both of those two things. All right, um, we got about seven minutes left. Uh, also, if it's your first day, kind of uh, checking this out. Make sure you please do click on the notes section. This is for people that are inside the trade room. So if you're watching on YouTube and you wanted to come inside our trade room, let me put in the password for you. It's green beer. So that's the password. If you wanted to come on over into the trade room, and the way you get to the trade room is you go to uh, our website right here, which I will give you. And you go here and you go here. And you go here. So let me give you this. So if you're on YouTube and you wanted to pop on over where most of us are hanging out, uh, just go over there. That's where the live trade room is. I'll try to monitor the, ch the chat here. Um, yeah, thank you. Lee Trevino, man. One of my favorite golfers. Thank you so much. Give us some likes here. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So... Really quick down and dirty orientation. Again, you're, uh, you can get access to all of these indicators uh, with the exception of the extreme turn. They're all for free. You can set up your charts like this on TradingView. You'll have your lanes. This is the offer zone. This is the bid zone. Um, but more importantly, just learning levels and learning strategy. We're all about this concept that I coined called situational fluency, which is once you understand how this all works, you can say, oh, visually... This looks nice. It was a nice range-bound day, which it was. All of that could change right now in a heartbeat. But the other thing you would know about trading this range today, again, is that that this 13 points is very, very narrow. Not such that you would probably ever want to be trading the plus ones or minus ones. So that's what situational fluency is all about, being able to recalibrate um, kind of in real time, do what humans are really good at so you don't have to be recalibrating and constantly changing the logic for a bot or a strategy and simply just use your own noggin to understand what the volatility profile is and how you would make decisions. The decisions I think most of us will be making at this time is to sit on our hands, just sort of see what happens in the initial reaction uh, and then sort of take it, uh, take it from there. Uh, overall, uh, I have not been profitable on Fed days. Um, and unfortunately, it's also swings that are way more uh, way more significant than in the past, meaning that I make a lot of money or I lose a decent amount of money more than I would normally lose. So today, essentially, we're going to keep it really, really small just in these prop programs and, and keep it pretty light and tight uh, so that I don't get too far off sides. Uh, if the treasuries do tank significantly, I might have to get quiet here for a little bit and be selling some puts and manipulating some positions because I do have pretty sizable position long essentially in the uh, treasury markets and a small percentage of that will be highlighted here. The things that will tend to move the most uh, right off the announcement, although everything generally has a jittery correl correlated kind of move, um, is gold 
and the two, five, and 10 year treasuries, and then to a slightly lesser extent, the NASDAQ, and then below that, the MES. We could potentially not see this Dow really do a whole lot of anything, but or we could see the whole thing be a dud. Who knows? That's why that's why we're here to watch it all together. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't say Fed days are risky. What Fed days are is unfortunately similar to what we're seeing right now. They're low volatility periods followed by a potential big volatility expansion, which is sort of hard to 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 deal with, right? Now, Mark my words right now, you're hearing this at just shy of 2 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow, likely, will be a very good day because we'll be working off of a large range that's put in today, hopefully, right? Now, we actually had a pretty decent range yesterday on Tuesday, which we filled into the upside. So all bets are off on which direction. We're not in the business of trying to pick directions. But what would be great is if we did get some really nice range expansion here and we can trade tomorrow with the same kind of range that we had on Tuesday in terms of um, in terms of two-way action. Now, obviously, on Tuesday, it was sort of up, up, and away, right? Tuesday and Monday, actually. Monday, it was a fade of the pop, and then Tuesday, a pretty nice trend day for the most part to the upside. So, uh, Al, the best thing to do is to go over to the website, tradersdevgroup.com, and make sure that you're signed up for the actual full trial. Here we go, one minute. You know, it's fun to do is to watch the uh, NASDAQ on the Brickwicks because it ends up looking like a hamster on meth. Uh, so anybody who's interested in, in finding out more, you go and sign up for the full trial just to tradersdevgroup.com. Just go try for free. And then you'll get access to the PTR portal, which has some cheat sheets and everything. If Brad or some moderator or whatever can drop some of the cheat sheets in there, I think they're up in the notes. That's fine too. In other words, we have a, a cheat sheet that helps you set up your your charts for both, uh, for, for everything there. All right, here we go. Survey says... Okay, so it's there. Oops. Order filled. Yikes. That's a interesting direction. Nice spike for the ZN, ZT. Order filled. Order filled. All right. So I'm short another contract here on the uh, Dow, as you can see there. Order submitted. Order filled. Order submitted. So here's my uh, Dow over here. We went and, of course, popped out of the range. So the stay in your lanes are essentially meaningless here, right? So we want to be pretty aware of that. So I'm not really getting any kind of significant movement out of the ZN. I mean, it's decent. It popped all the way up here to 110, 215s, and now it's coming off pretty substantially. Dow going the wrong way against my short position, but again, that's a really, really tiny position overall. The money is going to be made or lost in what this ZN wants to do here. Okay, so I did get short in the top step X over here, which is not ideal. Um, maybe another ad in here in just a moment. I mean, we're well outside the zones. There's really no legitimate ad, but I'm going to hit that there, see if we can catch a little volatility burst here.
Feigning strength once a, divi once a direction is kind of shown initially is a little challenging. A lot of the time it just holds those, holds those levels. But who knows? As random as it gets, you know, we could give it all back in a heartbeat here. So hence, I will buy the market there just to cover that one. Just control risk. Ultimately, a target on a short here on this five minute would be way down there at the at this yellow line. All I have here on top step X is just a simple visual uh, volume profile. They call that the visible range volume profile, which is just a volume profile that's Give me one in the chat if you're in a trade or trading. Give me a two if you're sitting on your hands and Joe mowing. I just like to get a sense of what people are doing. Give me a one if you're doing something. Give me a two if you're not. There's no right or wrong answer at all. The nice thing now is the NASDAQ's giving you that high to kind of play off of. Let's see if we can go up and make another new high. So most people waiting, some people in. Okay. The most important thing to realize relative to at least these strategies is that the lanes were not really useful prior to this. They, they're meaningless. The fact that we're trading outside of the plus twos is, is not really meaningful. There will be days in which we have quite a bit of uh, range expansion and on those days, the bands are a lot more useful. All right, so kind of a mixture, but most people just letting it settle in here a little bit. Order filled. Quick check on the S&P, correlated move as well. Outside day up now, so important to understand we're outside the prior session's range. So really easy for the buyers to just start ripping it tater chip. If you weren't uh, long to start, you're just going to leave it alone, wait for some pullbacks. Like the the range trader long here on the S&P is way down here. I know it feels like, oh, Rod, no chance that we're going to go down there today. So without even looking, I'm going to guess that NVIDIA is solidly green. Ah, that's not that solidly green. SMCI down at 875. So they're frying the, frying the speculative longs there. So there's no real standout here. It's just an, a nice sort of one-ish one -ish percent 75 big gains for most of the uh, NASDAQ stocks here, but certainly enough to put us up close to Can actually move a need a um, pop on the short end the ZT up to about 102 115s. I'm resting in order to short a little bit more there. Let's 
So what's ideal for my positioning off screen here is a close above 110 today. I'm short a lot of 110 puts on the ZN. Dum Dum occasionally gets one right. I was not really sure what could possibly get us meaningfully below one, 109 half today, but we'll see. Maybe they give it all up. At least the initial reaction was higher with rates down. Okay, nice move for the position here on top step X. So now I can resell the highs here. Love the Dow to come in a little bit, but we're not getting the same kind of movement that we're getting in the NASDAQ yet. So now all that move was just to get us back inside this range. Okay, if you're really, really nimble and you want to use the plus twos as a long entry, I am mad at you, but it's not my cup of tea. So my first long entry here would be at the at VWAP. Order submitted. So I'd look to get long at VWAP. And again, I have a very short, um, very small short over here that's basically break even on these top step X accounts. So the MES has no short on the range trader or on the, uh, so, but I can answer your question. The one thing that I will do on occasion, Merlin, is I'll take uh, a new high, a new swing high. This would be at least an SOS2 in terms of the length of the swing. And why don't we just do it for educational purposes? I, I would short right at that line and then about six ticks higher. Order submitted. So there you go. When you're, whenever you have volatility expansion from a known event like this where your bands aren't really uh, useful until such time as vol comes in, you can now sell that new high plus six ticks or just this swing level high, which is up there at, at 52.66. And um, a, a real great thing, I think, about looking at the charts and pr patterns this way is there's a lot of people that are on, you know, using jigsaw or five minute or three minute bars and or looking at a dome, God forbid. And when you're doing that, you don't see these swing levels like that. You see something on your chart that, or, or maybe on your watch list that says the high in the MES was 52.6675 today. But we can just look at that, you know, and pick it off directly, directly there. So, um, so anyway, that would be the answer to that, Merlin. That's where I would do that there. <laughs> yeah, I know it sucks when you Fed minutes cutting into your golf time. I hear you. And one of the things that's also nice about if you just sort of have a very simple setup like I do, I know some of you would look at this and go, it's not very simple. But I can take that 52.66.75 and just come right over here and instantly have it on 52.66.75 is right there. Um, and Order cancel. Order cancel. I'm going to cancel it over here and I'll just express that position as a short and take profit if it goes up there. Dow pu push, uh, punching right back up. NASDAQ as well. Order filled. Okay, so now we kind of start the I look at the initial reaction as around nine minutes. I've done a lot of back testing into into uh, reactions to news events and things like that, and about six to nine minutes kind of gets you a lot of a, a good sense. So now we're past that. We're about eleven minutes from the statement, and then we'll have about twenty minutes until we get to pal talking, and a lot of the time pal talking will will get it done.
Remember, all the machines have already digested all of his prepared statements because the prepared statements are released at the same time the statement is. So he'll read his prepared statement. That's already in the, in the market. Order filled. Nice, BK. I love it. Nice account balances there. Really nice. That's a classic example of the TDG way. Yeah, and I would say no moss. I would go with the power of quitting on that one. So you caught you caught one direction correctly, or maybe a few. Just kind of leave it alone. Remember, we all a lot of people love to be short. They like to try to fade strength. It's uh, much more treacherous to be to be short. Come on, Dow. Come on down. Come on down, Dow. We're going down, 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 down. We're going down. Order filled. Oh, they took that right away. Jesus. They're like, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Forget, I don't broadcast on YouTube that much. I got to make sure I don't pick my nose. If you're watching um, on YouTube, I did put a link in there to how you can come in and check it out inside the room if you'd like. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, Ricky, I can probably answer that for, 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 oh, is that you, Ricky? What's up, bud? How are you? So what we're doing here as you get oriented to this, Ricky, is that that's, this is, this is the Ricky, right? Yeah. Vegas Ricky. Um, what you're looking at when people post screenshots like that is they have multiple accounts at our prop firm or one of our prop firms. Yeah, you are infamous at one of our prop firms. And then they're using a copier. So what happens is we place the trade in one account. And then it gets copied across all those other accounts. So you will learn more about that. It's a tremendous opportunity. Once, of course, leverage cuts both ways, right? If if those were all red, all it would be a loser across all the accounts. So it doesn't necessarily represent one trade. Just rep it could represent a series of trades. But BK can um, comment on exactly what maybe what that trade was, but it was probably a series of trades or couple trades that were across replicated across all those accounts okay press conference hitting here in uh, 15 minutes ah look at that ZN come in God darn it that's a that's a move Let me see if it'll allow me. Uh, I don't know if I have enough margin Order here. Submitted. Nope. See, not yet. Keep in mind, folks, that this account is this account over here. I just use it for education and teaching purposes. So it's a real account, but it only has 10 grand in it. So you're limited. The thing that, that's good about also having some live capital in the markets when you're ready is you'll learn how things really work in terms of margin and things like that. And of course, you know, this is the account where I'll take withdrawals out of it each month of, you know, some months are great, two or 3,000, 20 or 30%, some months 50%. Um, no losing months in, uh, since I started that whole thing, which was sometime last month, last year, excuse me. Okay, so you hit a few longs. All right, awesome. So you got a few longs. So you're long and that was being replicated. Good deal. 
I'm actually going to uh, buy this ZN right here at VPOC in the uh, in this prop Order account. Submitted. So let's see if we can get along on there. Order filled. Yeah. All right, so Nazi heading down. Let's turn this frown around and just take it right here. There we go. Order filled. Okay, and for those following along at home, this this trade is copied in uh, one, two, three, four, five accounts. So that's fifty-five bucks times five is two hundred fifty dollars in those top step Xers. Let's just trade the, I'm gonna trade educational purposes only. We'll just trade the, uh, the NASDAQ here a little more aggressively. So if it's your first time kind of watching this, what I mention all the time is that I can, I can teach you this in 30 seconds, you ready? When we're up here in this area, this is called the offer zone. Remember, we finally got a little range expansion uh, from you know, 70, 80 points up to 150 points now that the Fed policy statement came out. So now it makes this a level that we can work off of. So you're sh we're gonna short uh, 353s. If we get a fill, I have ads all the way up here to highs of day plus six ticks. And then my target, if I was short, would be down here at VWAP, which is actually an area that I'll get long right here if we get down to 287s. So that's the play there. If you wanna look at it on the S&P, looks like this. Remember, someone asked about levels to short the S&P. And I'll put one in again at that swing level, which is basically highs of the session. But now if you wanted to be more aggressive, you could short the 5257s. And again, your your targets would be 5250 and 5243s. So some algo got this really wrong because the, the the original reaction was that rates dropped pretty quickly. We got this spike up to 110, 215. And now I'm over here like a hawk watching this 110 because I really don't want to get assigned more inventory. I already have a shit ton of ZN. So if we look here, this is my short put price for today right here. So... Let's do our best to collectively root for a move that does not go below that line. All right. If you guys got any more questions, you can fire them off. We got a little bit of a low here for 10 minutes until Powell starts talking. We check a uh, uh, question over here. How many contracts do I use? Uh, typically, my my biggest open positions in the prop programs will be about six to eight micros. And that would be if I was long two or three across two or three markets. So I'll, I'll never have more than six, six to eight micros on. Keep in mind that uh, we're all about establishing a daily risk budget here. And your sizing is really contingent on your skill level and your daily risk budget. So as you improve your risk management skills, which is also commensurate with, you know, learning the levels, lots of screen time, practice, all that good stuff, you'll be able to increase your risk budget. And once you can increase your risk budget, you can increase your size. The problem that's almost uh, the reason 99% fail is because 99% never take the time to realize that 
Growing your account is not how you can actually get bigger and put on more size. Learning how to not lose parts of your account is how you can get bigger and put on more size. Does that make sense? There's still nine out of 10 trader dentists that will teach and educate that you want to grow a day trading account so that you can then add more contracts and more size to grow it even more and to compound it. That's nonsense. That's bullshit. Total bullshit. Why does anyone want to grow a day trading account? Get your day trading account and your risk management dialed in. Use the leverage that the prop programs provide and then just trade your day trading account for monthly income and then take the profits and pay yourself. If you want to take some of that money and invest in NVIDIA or Bitcoin or whatever the frick you like to invest in, that's how you get wealthy and grow your wealth. You, you take the money you earn from this and you invest it. This is not investing. So you're essentially your contract size for the most part, at least in my opinion, should stay the same for a lot of your day trading career. The only way it grows is when you get better at managing risk. So anyway, there you go. That's the answer over on YouTube. Uh, so real quick on the platforms I'm using, I have three different platforms being shown. The main one that you see here is NinjaTrader. I'm actually showing four, I think. So the main one here is NinjaTrader. Then we also have TradingView connected to Tradeavate for another prop firm. This is for Take Profit. Then this is the proprietary platform for Top Step. It's called Top Step X. And then finally, I have Tradeavate itself. So lots to choose from. You don't have to have all of them. If you have Tradeavate, you basically have Ninja because Ninja is owned by Tradeavate's owned by Ninja. And if you have Tradeavate, then you have Trading View because you can log into Trading View through Trade of Eight. It's all super incestuous, but it takes a little time to get adjusted to everything. I would say that probably, and correct me if I'm wrong, 80-ish percent of our trading community, their primary charting and analysis and execution platform is Ninja, but it's changing day by day. Yeah, but this is Ninja Trader that we're that we're seeing right here. So this right now on the screen is only Ninja Trader. Nope, Matai, that's not true. I'm I got it down. Professional day traders would would disagree that they're trying to grow their account. Okay, you don't you don't know any real professionals. We pay ourselves. Because we can make all the money we can possibly need with a low six figure. If you're a futures trader, so just real quick, there was a comment about a lot of, that's my opinion, a lot of futures traders would agree. Um, all of my opinions are the dead ass truth. <laughs> so I'm probably, I have more experience than anybody that does anything on YouTube, even Anthony Cronelli and all those guys. So here's the deal. If you are a professional futures trader, trader and i mean professional you earn your living at it okay and by the way there are now some professionals that have emerged of course from these prop programs because they are earning the equivalent of a full-time income kind of playing this game with smaller accounts that they're able to grow to a certain size but then they have to take those profits there are some scaling programs that some of the prop programs provide but here's the deal with two to three hundred thousand dollars on deposit at a broker if you knew how this actually works you can get unlimited buying power during the day. You can go to Dan Dorman and give him a quarter of a million dollars and it's first risk loss. He doesn't care. Go for it. Trade a thousand MES contracts if you want. doesn't matter. So the point I'm making is that the reason that true professionals don't need to grow their day trading account and don't look to do that is because they have enough capital to start with. Now, are there some people that might want to start with five or $10,000 and see what you can grow it to? Fine, great. Have at it. What a total waste of time. You're not going to make any money off that. So anyway, that's my take there. Do with that information what you will. Now, that's not the case with stock trading. The reason stock trading is so asinine is because you have to have a prop relationship or access to a tremendous amount of leverage if you actually want to be able to control enough shares to uh, supplement and complement your income in a meaningful way. Stocks are tremendously 
capital inefficient. So again, have at it. Take 25,000 of your own money and, you know, triple it to 75. Great. Then what are you going to do? You didn't take any profits. You still have a full-time job. Even if you t- took the 50,000 out, now you're right back where you started. All right. The uh, treasuries are not going the right way. Let's get a little pop here, maybe. And by the way, not even the folks that trade at Jump or Citadel or even SMB and stuff, they're not growing their day trading account. What they're doing is managing risk, generating money for themselves and the firm, and then the firm gives them more money. <laughs> That's how professional trading works, just, you know. All right, anyway. Okay, there we go. So we got the NASDAQ popping back up here. I'm going to throw another little minor short on here. We're still well within the session highs. Yeah, we also have to define what we mean by professional, right? Technically, if you make any income, you could say that you're a professional. I suggest that as long as possible, everyone listening to my voice, try to avoid any classification of professional as long as you can. Because eventually, if you get really involved in the futures market, the CME will hunt you down for every possible dime of data they can ever get. So don't... We're all just dumb, drunk monkeys pushing buttons. That's, that's, what we, that's, that's, our, that's our world. Dumb, drunk mon- monkeys pushing buttons. By the way, if it's your first time here and seeing this, the other advantage that we have in our trading group here is if I have a big loser on the screen, I don't have to close it out because all I have to do is put up a picture of happy squirrels and then, you know, who cares what the PL is? So that's what we do. If we got a position we don't like, we don't close it. Like, like over here, this short Dow, this isn't going well. Let's just put the squirrels over it, and um, yeah, then we're all set. We could also put the squirrels over the ZN over here, too. That one's fine. That's in a prop program, but there's real money. That's not good. Let's put the squirrels over that one. All right, we got the NASI approaching, sorry, the S&P now approaching these highs of day. So you could sell the high of day. Or what I like to do is high of day plus about, let's call it eight ticks. So we'll go up to somewhere like that. That's a little bit of a made up number. No, not dumb drunk monkeys, just drunk. We're not dumb. We're, we're above average monkeys. Pro equals S corp. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't have any S corps for any of my trading organizations. We file taxes as an S corp, but use an LLC. I don't provide any tax advice. What the f do I know about taxes? But anyway, what level did I buy that ZN? Well, here's the way this thing with the ZN worked out: was it's marked from getting assigned here, okay, but. I was short the 111 puts. So I was short the 111 puts, and that is from an assignment from almost, I want to say, like a week or two weeks ago. So it was via a short put assignment. So what I like to do is throw good money after bad. No, the idea behind even trading treasuries in this account here is I just try to track it a little bit for the purpose of our trade room so that people can see see that this account now is down 62 bucks. It's right at starting stack which was 10,000 for this month. But uh dovetailing off what I was just describing, if you come over to our oh by the way, there was a nice uh nice trade here. Look at that. I'm just going to close that again. 
So now, there you go, that's $113 across all these accounts. So here's the copier, see, well that's one, yeah, 113 bucks across those accounts. The copier on uh, Top Step X works really, really well. So what I wanted to show here is we have a channel that, the channel that I'm most happy with is who gives a shit what I'm doing pushing buttons. It's when you guys have this kind of success, pass the programs, take payouts, right? Take actual payouts from these programs. Um, but here's what I do. So with that account there, again, this idea of growing it, I just took $1,600 out last month. That's Actually, I took $3,300 out because there was another withdrawal the very same month. Here we go. That's not it. So you got up to 11,607. I took 1,600 out, grew it back up, took 1,600 out. And on a percentage basis, gang, this is insane. It's stuff that you people would say it's not possible. You can't do that. You can't you can't grow an account by 20 or 30 percent a month. Sure you can. With levered products, once you learn how to control risk, all day long. And I don't refer to that as consistently profitable. I refer to it as consistently keeping my account balance healthy enough for me to continue to rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Because radical transparency, this account is at starting stack while with an open frickin' loss here of $1,268, which means how is that possible? Well, you know how it's possible, right? I was up about two or three grand this month already and gave it back. By the way, we got the NASDAQ coming in. Pretty nice. So Powell's helping helping my uh, Dow position here a little bit. Order submitted. Let's run a buy stop right there. Remember, I'm short Dow. Going to get long the NASDAQ here on a VWAP touch. Maybe a little earlier. I'm going to cover the short and get long here. I was going to use the short as a as a stop and reverse, but uh, excuse me, target and reverse, but um, order filled. Okay, nice move here on this Dow. So really, I should have taken one at the, should have had an order there at VWAP for a touch. All right, so anyway. Now I'm going to resell the highs today. Order submitted. Long in the prop program, uh, little NASDAQ. See what can happen there. All right, he's talking down the ZT and the ZF. I've now gone to profit, although I don't want to be profitable on those. Order filled. Wow, look at that hit. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Order submitted. Let's see if we can get some shorts on here now. Order submitted. In the offer zone. I don't know if you guys can see this here, but this says $364. So that's, ooh, let's just hit it. Jeez, this is great. It's, well, we just missed it. Now he's getting us to move around a little bit. Um, so that's in, uh, you know, that's in one of the prop programs. And then I'm copying that across a few other things. So a uh, pretty good day here, all things considered. Probably after a few more trades, I'll be... Uh, I'll be done here. I'll have a long here on the S and P on the Nasdaq, just below that structure there. The high volume node here on the visible range profile is two sixty sevens. Order filled. Order canceled. 
So now the uh, algos are bound, banging into each other, as you guys can see there. It's an algo bang. <laughs> Okay, let's do the same thing. Give me one if you're in positions or trading, and two if you're still watching. It's fine to watch through the whole session until Pal stops talking. You'll have the most amount of range that you can work with. We've got a little short CL. Okay, so combination of factors. It's perfect. All right. On this Dow, I am going to get short here. Order filled. Order filled. Got the Nasdaq on a two lot. It's starting to scream. They like it. Likes what Pal saying. It's pretty wild when he reads a prepared statement. Order filled. All right. Got a four lot on short on the Dow now. Stop filled. All right, bum got stopped out there. All right, Colin, Steely, you guys, everyone's managing today pretty well, which is great. Great to hear. All right, this time take a Order submitted. cover at that swing level on the Dow short if we get down there to 593s. Probably not a surprise that at least on CNBC, while their pal was talking, they just hang on the NASDAQ for the most part. Then they, they move through things a little bit, but they just mostly just show the NASDAQ chart. All right, graceful exit available on the Z T Z N on my uh, in the prop program here. Not quite yet, but I'm just going to see if I can take that off and instead buy. <coughs> Members will know where do we go. Members will know where do we go. Right here, right. Graceful exit here. Grace flex, it just simply means getting out of a, a losing position at a more favorable level than where you originally were losing from. <coughs> Anyhow, this is uh, this level right here on the ZN. That is prior sessions VPOC, always a level. So this up here on the announcement, all random, everything random. No sense that the T-line would contain anything. Current VPOC, always important in a level, but the prior session's VPOC, we stopped there almost to the tick. Order filled. Order filled. No doubt, uh, this is uh, this live swing account. I'm going to hold this position in here and just I'll take I'll take some 
so actually, yeah, the question was, is, is it in graceful exit mode? 100% for, there's no ads here anymore for me. I'm looking to try to scale out of that if possible or some of it. By the way, uh, first look at gold, as you can see, nice pop from gold, way stronger than the uh, 10 year, like way stronger. Order filled. Okay, short the MES, that was a new high there. Uh, I'm gonna cancel the short here. And just leave it, leave it over here. Stop filled. All right. So now we just got to manage this uh, this Dow, this Dow. <coughs> got a little. I love it. All you members came in as using the uh, using the the green beer password. Green beer. So over here, Nasdaq. See if we can come up and make another new high above 400. 400 has been some decent resistance for a while. Remember, we popped up there to 18,500, but that was with the help of uh, Order filled. that was with the help of um, user words rod Nvidia going to nearly a thousand before they pulled the plug on that. There we go. That's a nice little move. Keep falling. Order submitted. So, anyone that doesn't think this is the best time to possibly be alive in speculation, watching this nonsense, and, and I mean that in like a playful way. It, it's just the silliest thing ever. Like just just look at this NASDAQ. It's, it's just pure greed and algorithms banging into each other. There's nothing changed in the world of anything that has to do with Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, NVIDIA's business. All oh, these people who try to guess the fundamentals, the funny mentals, the funny mentals. All right, let's see if we can make a new high by a couple points here. Up to 420, man. Go to 420, man. Order filled. 420. All right, I'm going to have to short this more of this ZT here. No. Order filled. Issue. We covered uh, covered that ZN. 420, man. Green beer. Let's just rip another 100 points real fast on this, Nazi. Come on. Order just that. rip it up. Rip it, rip it, and grip it. Order filled. Okay, so now we can go 420 plus about six points, like 426 in here. Order submitted. Like there. Remember, you can be doing it either way. You can be buying the really quick pullbacks as well. Both are pretty treacherous. A um, lot safer to be buying the pullbacks. Safer is the wrong word. A little higher probability. Because you can see if that uh, if these rates start coming in and that ZN pops there, it should help the NASDAQ stay a little bit bid. Uh, 
How's everyone doing? Is everybody green? Everybody better be green. Green in honor of St. Patty's Day last week. All right. I'm going to leave this NASDAQ short alone. We've already made some money on the short side. Now it's eaten into our profits over there. So I'll just leave that alone. And then this Dow short, leaving a little mark. Leaving a little mark. All right, so some folks are trading, some folks are are not. Remember the most important thing in just a little while when we talk about our P&L and EC scores is what you manage to do in terms of profit or loss relative to your daily risk budget. The only metric that really matters is, again, what is your profit or loss relative to a unit of risk? And for us, a unit is a day trading session, and your unit of risk is whatever your daily risk budget is for that session. For most people, God forbid, I hope that session is not 23 hours long. It's going to be more about an hour or two that you have time to spend trading. That's the amount of money that you have in your risk budget for that period of time. A little quick check on some of the Dow stocks to see a little bit of sentiment action there. You can see that everything is green now with the exception of Chevron, Johnson & Johnson. United Healthcare, again, if United Healthcare was up meaningfully today, the Dow would be up about four or 500 points. The fact that the big dog is, big dog is being held down, obviously the next biggest dog is Goldman Sachs. Remember the Dow Jones is price weighted average, not Market cap. Obviously, Apple has a massive market cap versus even United Healthcare, but we care about basically just the price. All right, fire off any questions if you have them. Here we go. All right, there's another graceful exit. And now I can sell the swing highs again. Remember, you do not have to be shorting up here, but you wanna be very cautious on, um, very cautious on getting long unless it's a more meaningful, deeper pullback, you know? Some of these pullbacks look pretty pretty good, but just be a little cautious there. I mean, wait till we at least come back inside range. I mean, we're not even, we're outside. Here's the minus, the plus twos are coming in at 390s. In this case, graceful X just means look what you could get without a preset target. Uh, no, no, no. You know, you know the concept behind the graceful X it is, right? It's just when you got a position that has, has significantly and quickly gone against you, you should be looked to try to exit it at all costs. If you have a fixed or dynamic stop and it hits the stop, then that doesn't matter. But I don't trade with stops, so I'm just trading around an entire daily risk budget. 
So this NASDAQ is 100% in graceful exit mode. On every move in my favor, I'm gonna take some inventory off, which also gives me the opportunity to, to re-enter the position right back up. I have not gracefully exited any of these, uh, this Dow short here yet. See, there you go, we just keep making new highs. So we keep making new highs. That would not be possible if I hadn't taken some off on the last move. Remember, there is a, in the training uh, area here, there is a whole video on the concept of a graceful exit. It's a simple but very powerful risk management technique. Uh, where's the training section? I don't know, this, the order of this thing does, it just doesn't make sense to me. Off topic, okay. This off topic stuff should all be at the bottom. Uh, where's the training channel? You know what? Um, here it is. Uh, Here's a little thing on uh, the art of situational fluency in trading. And I believe there's a graceful exit video here. Yeah, right here. So let me put this in YouTube as well. There you go. Oh, no, I'm not in profits. No, no, no. This has been this is a red number over here. Red number. I mean, I'm profitable overall for for the session, but not on these Nasdaq shorts. And if I had been paying attention, I would have taken one off here just to break even, but I'm not paying attention. There you go. Art art's always good for showing some massive P&L porn. And for those that aren't familiar, when you see that PA in front of it, that stands for performance account. So that's real money, baby. Order filled. I'm vanilla, baby. Oh, wait, what's that song? I like that guy. I am like no whips and chains and you can't hold me down. That's a PA, baby. Has everyone heard the uh, TDG rap? Everyone, I hope you've all heard the TDG rap. TDG rap. Order submitted. That's a rap. Order filled. All right, there's 1% finally. It was just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. There, thank you, Steve. That's my passive aggressive way of whining and getting things done. So now we have, uh, look at that. Do I, have to re do I have to refresh? Log out, log back in for the changes to take effect? No, they're already there, right? I love it. Random off topic. Back where it belongs at the bottom here. We need to spend more time with the Dodger Chronicles. All right, another graceful exit. Now we're in profit on this NASDAQ again. So now, now we're, uh, we're holding up. So now I should come over here and revisit. Yeah, we need more. We need to come in a little bit more. Come down in time. We are, uh, we're not doing too well over here on our, na on our Dow Jones short, but we got some time. We got time left. All right. Order submitted. Going to run a buy stop here now. 
so we can come back in. Dude, what are you doing in there? All right, stopped out here. We are all flat in that prop program, up about 252 bucks. And so far, everything's working out where it just pops right back up. I mean, Order submitted. Order filled. so let's just sell a retest of new highs again. All right, we've got a few questions over here on YouTube. Let's go over here and answer them. I love answering the public. Uh, sure, do you, but do you have that number correct five months? I don't remember what I was talking about. Uh, you mentioned it's normal to make 20% gains per month. Oh, um, I get your question. So, no, Marley, you can accelerate that when you're ready. I'm not suggesting you need to take five months to qualify for a... Uh, for for one of those prop programs you can accelerate that add a little bit more size i was just referring to a live ten thousand dollar account see the thing that's toxic about these top prop programs is the notional value which is totally nonsense and then you know you have this fifteen hundred dollar account and there's a million things that are wrong with, with that saying based on the, the notional value the way this should work if it was done properly is if you signed up for a quote-unquote $25,000 account, your account balance would be zero when you logged in. And if you drew down to minus 1500, you would be out. And if you made it to 1500, you would have passed. But in terms of the percentage gains in those prop accounts, no, you can certainly look to establish a risk budget of about 10 to 20% of your available drawdown. So let's say you did 20%, that'd be a $300 risk budget for the day. If you abide by that risk budget and that's religious and you continue to practice, you will have outside day, outside gaining days. They'll just happen, you know, somewhere around the 100 to 150% of your risk budget. You might have even a 3x day, you know, where you just, okay, now I'm getting a little pissed at this Z, uh, ZN because it's going the wrong way, but the at least the ZN is going the right way. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I feel pretty good about the fact that I think we're going to hold 110 for these short puts. And I'm going to keep all my money. They're barely bid at this point, so we only have to sweat another hour. So hopefully, Marley, that answered your question. Um, I'm referring more to a, like a five or $10,000 real live, real money account. But the sizing and everything is, is essentially the same. Man, the Dow is strong. So remember, another thing if you end up coming in here becoming a member of our group is if you have a losing position like this, $541, all you have to do All you got to do is just put a squirrel on it. That's it. Just put a squirrel on it. We have other choices too, but squirrel's a good one. You can also put a situational fluency monkey on top of it if you want. So then you could like really block the whole screen. You know, you just put your situational fluency monkey on there. And these graphics are all included now in your membership. Look at that Nazi. Damn. We're going to get a fill at a new high there. So we gave, we gave it all back here. Not all of it, but a good chunk. A big enough chunk. Squirrel it, baby. That's right. All right. Any other questions that I missed there? One thing I can tell you about this sort of TDG way and a different approach is 
you'll get off that hamster wheel of blowing up accounts, worrying about trailing drawdown, all these kinds of things. You have to absolutely do 100% of nothing that I teach and train in here in order to actually blow up any of these accounts. Because if the only thing you did was say, okay, my daily risk budget is $200 on a $1,500 account, I don't know if any of you guys could possibly lose seven, eight, nine, ten 10 days in a row without putting up some gains. And that would be if you hit your entire daily risk budget every single day. Oh, it's possible, Rod. I know it's possible, of course. But it's possible because you're not abiding by the daily risk budget. You are not entering the market at high probability areas where it's easier to manage risk. You're over leveraged, so your PL is freaking you out every time you hit the button. You don't need to do it. Just do it differently. Yeah, there's a yeah, there's, there's only one rule. You know how top step and all these have come back, you know, they're only one rule. You gotta love the top step one rule in a fifty thousand dollar account you're allowed to to have a daily loss of a thousand dollars in any given session that's ridiculous your entire account value is three grand so sure lose 30 percent of your account a day you're a great great risk manager it happens no it doesn't that's what professionals don't do they don't take 10, 50, 100, any amount of money and lose 30% in a day. Or they, they won't be classifying themselves that way for very long. All right. Let's go up here. And I think I'm going to gracefully exit this, uh, this top step one on this pullback here and just take it. That way I can resell new highs. We keep coming up to make some new highs. So let's do that. Could you hold through a move like that with two full end cues on? You better not. That fifty bucks is is a thousand bucks with two end cues, two full end cues. It's a thousand dollars. That's right. There's only one rule, baby. All right, keep the questions coming if you have them. Ooh, I like this Monroe comment. I watch you for 10 minutes and it's all bullshit. Awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I like I like those those comments a lot better than the past which was can you show me your track record and can I have verified statements before I decide to try something on a free trial? Do 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 all right so over here on the dow jones we got no ads because it's just up up and away so we were talking earlier about the one candlestick pattern that is validated which is kermit's excitement third candle on that here's a brand new high on the nazi So if you guys have watched uh, this kind of stuff before on Fed Days, what we'll, we will tend to have then is a little bit of a grind and the last 10 or 20 minutes will be very interesting to see if they decide to sustain this level. What's a bummer is we're not inside yesterday's range, of course, so it's going to lead to these outside day ups are very easy for the current trend to continue. So consider that. But it should make for a really great day tomorrow, especially if we come inside range before the end of today's session. Do I have any accounts with Lilu? No, not anymore. Lilu's um, gotten a little gimmicky, like really gimmicky. So they were one of kind of the original ones, you know, somewhat original. The original, of course, is Top Step, then. Um, I transitioned and, and did some stuff with 1UP for a while, for a couple of years there. And then, of course, Lilu came along. Then Apex copied Lilu. And then now there's 10 or 15 to choose from. So, no, I don't have anything with Lilu anymore. 
all of the prop programs are only for me just for education in here not about you know the last uh, 15 apex accounts i passed i just canceled them i'll i'll never uh you know fund or take take any of these top step ones live I actually checked with them just to make sure. I think they're going to eventually limit me. So I bought all these for $5. And my intention was literally to have them forever. But I don't think they're going to let me do that. <laughs> they're going to, at some point, I swear, they're going to come back and go, okay, that's enough. We launched the Top Step X program. We have enough users. Uh, you can't sit here and hang out with these accounts for forever for $5 a month. For our group, I would say the most popular firm is still Apex. Then after that, probably Bullinox. Then uh, Elite Trader Funding. Then maybe Take Profit. Uh, these Take Profit accounts, I will fund. Um, just, just to fund them. I don't know if I'll ever take profits out of them or try to grow them. but Or cash flow them, not grow them. Remember, you first have to actually get to a reasonable buffer. So... Another good thing about doing acorns to oak trees and keeping things small to start is that you're not going through that vicious cycle of, oh, I finally passed, now what do I do? Or I, I failed so many times and I finally passed one. If, if you failed a bunch of times before you passed one in a, in a sort of really toxic manner or, or a manner in which you were over leveraged, didn't abide by a daily risk budget, weren't trading micros, the chances of you keeping that count are slim and none. Whereas if you qualify in a manner that's similar to this, then you just roll into the live one and it's all good. All right, I think we'll have maybe five or 10 more minutes. How am I tracking my daily loss limit? I just, I have it over here on, uh, right here. So this account is the one that you're seeing right here. It's up 181 bucks. And now you see I'm below starting stack on this live account. And the reason is because <laughs> I have I have that uh, Dow Jones trade that is just ripping to the upside. Thank goodness the, uh, the ZN here is managing to eat into the losses a little bit. But so you just watch it here on a blotter. And my daily risk budget for this account is 440. It's 440 for all of, uh, all of the prop accounts. And over on those couple live accounts, you know what I'm, uh, we should look to do? Let's do this real quick. Let's take a look at um, selling some calls on the NASDAQ. How treacherous is that on a day before? You know, we could be hundreds of points higher by the end of the day. We'll see. Wednesdays are for runners, but let's go in here and just take a look at what the, I'm probably going to, uh, let's look at it on the uh, S&P, a little bit easier to handle. So go to futures, and then the indices here, we're going to go to the MES, micro e-mini S&P, right there. Oh, that's not what I want. I need the options for it. Okay. Okay, so we know we're trading at 5280s. So the 50 delta around, right, right around the 5285s. Uh, you know, it's also always great is when they don't bring back any data. That's always awesome. I mean, that makes it really useful when there's nothing on the options chain. So we can just like guess the prices. That's always fun. Let's see here. Let's try again. <laughs> All right. Fill in, fill in, choose your own adventure. <laughs> All right, another opportunity to slightly gracefully exit that. And then now we can just uh, sell new high again. 
Structure submitted. Uh, first day traded one MES. You made 114. Is this reasonable? Uh, Jeff, we're going to need a little bit more data, a little bit more time. Here at TDG, I vastly encourage people to check us out for kind of as long as you want to with, within reason. We've kind of cut that down. And then know that the best thing to do is make the last investment you'll ever make in your trading education. Just become a lifetime member. Then you got a whole lifetime to decide what's reasonable. Um, that's a great day. You made $114 on a single MES. Fantastic. Obviously, you can transfer that into points, right? 20, 20 points in the MES. Awesome, dude. I'll take it. Uh, I ain't going to lie. This kind of pisses me off when this thing's not working right. I'd have to go over to the actual app, but... Um, but, uh, hmm. all right, we'll deal with that later. I can look at it over here, but yeah, you're going to need a little bit more data. So uh, what's your Kerpos, folks, if you're in a trade? Uh, Kerpos stands for current positions. Just helpful to kind of understand how people are, are orienting themselves here. This is probably a decent enough pullback in the NASDAQ to get long. We haven't quite got there, so I could see some of you getting long in there. Uh, I'm going to hold these, hold these shorts here. Uh, let's see. We can yeah buy the market there and just come back. There we go. We keep making new highs. Uh, limit sell. There's a limit sell right there. Sell the high of the day again. Keep getting the pops. Short the MES. Okay. Yeah, the, everything's staying strong here. So I think I answered the Lilu accounts. No, don't have. I don't have any accounts with Lilu, and I don't think Lilu is as popular across the board as maybe they used to be. There's just so much choice. So much choice. All right, let's put back up the unprofitable position here. Order canceled. All right, so we're short the MYM. All right, we're flat. All right, not a lot of comments on positions. I imagine most people are probably flat. Let's hang out for another 15 minutes. We'll go straight up till 12.30. The last 20 minutes or so on these Fed days can be full of a lot of wild kind of quarrel. Uh, Steely wants to put the squirrels back up. Yeah, we could put the squirrels on the screen, but let's just let's just, let's just just deal with it for a little bit here. Deal with it. All right, Steve's putting his, uh, there we go, Nazi up to almost, yep, yeah, look at this, gotta love how wild it is.
Should get a fill here again on this short at a new high. Order filled. Okay, I'm going to do a new high by 10 points there on the Dow if we get up here uh, over on this uh, these prop programs over here. I'm about 25-ish percent into my daily risk budget, so not ideal. We've had no retracements at all in the Dow at all, so... And if you are nimble, you've been rewarded on every single little pullback in the Nasdaq to get uh, to get long. If you've been if you've been doing that, I mean, you've been rewarded on every single one. It's gone up and made a new high. So in just a little bit, not right now, in just a second, I'm going to ask a question about how to calibrate and rank your performance for today. And it's going to be based on this legend here that you can find under the notes. Order filled. Not the squirrel, although we should put the squirrel there. New high for the... NASDAQ there. Field. We're approaching some escape velocity where I really would, um, I wish I could bring up, uh, maybe we can bring up the NASDAQ there in a second. But here we have um, our scorecard, right? So remember, everything is affected by your daily risk budget. If it's your first time here and you just listened to all this, the most important thing you can do is establish that daily risk budget. It's informed by a number of things, but a good way to start is if you're in one of the prop programs, just don't risk more than 10% of your account value, okay? So if you're doing a $50,000 one and that's $3,000 as the account value, don't risk more than $300 in the day. That'd be very, very, very difficult to do trading even a single mini, right? So if you use the micros, you can see how you can kind of control that risk budget. Then you have these various factors here. What did you do in terms of profit relative profit or loss relative to your daily risk budget? And then below that, how did you get there? Did you get there all stressed out? Or were you cool, calm, and collected or kind of indifferent? The place to, I think, get to is total indifference. I almost have complete indifference. If anything, what would get my emotional capital score higher is when I'm just annoyed at something. Annoyed at a fill or a lack thereof because of a... Um, because uh, some market maker games when I'm trying to get into a position or I just get annoyed. All right. So given that, let's do our P&L and EC scores. Let's do it for just this afternoon session um, or not... You know, if you had some for today or if you trade, if you didn't trade, then you don't have anything. But so let's put that in there. Okay, Jeff made some good money, but he was a little stressed out. There you go. Let's have at least 15 or 20 people comment. Just make me feel good. Make me feel good. All right, we got yet another exit that we can make here so so far if you sold every new high and then took the retracement back you're still up shorting the nasdaq when it's up this strong again 
Don't have to do it that way. If you're looking to get long, wait for a little bit more of a deeper pullback. The first long that I would have on the NASDAQ would be a pullback all the way, all the way to uh, VWAP. There you go. G0, G0. Large G1. I love it. All right, that's literally the first retracement we've had Order at fail. all in the uh, <laughs> in the Dow. So I'll just limit that a little bit. Order filled. All right, don't have many people watching over on YouTube, but if you have any questions in there, let me know. Also, you can look up a little bit in the chat and you can see where you can uh, come on in for a whopping other additional five minutes and, and be inside the actual live trade room, which is just using different software. Yeah, I don't know if we might get some extreme turns today. We might. Yeah, the Dow is uh, Dow's leaving a little mark. It's leaving a little mark on my P&L today. But maybe if we can get the two and five year to come in a little bit. Actually, I don't give a shit about the, t <laughs> the Dow Jones over here on these accounts. But all right, there it goes the Nasdaq right back up. Oh, we have an extreme turn on the ZT. Oh yeah, that's right. I do see one there. I see one on, on uh, we can look at it on trading view too for a second. Come over here. Um, there it is. Wait, 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 wait for it, wait for it. Oh, I don't see it there. That's weird. There, There's definitely one here on, um, on Ninja. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now it came in. There's our extreme turn sell. Single bar, right? Single bar. Single bars we like. Oh, on the MNQ too. All right. Uh, All Stop right. Filled. Stop filled. All right. So a couple questions came in over here. Uh, what is your brick size? So the um, the brick sizes are all covered in the. Let me just grab the cheat sheets in here so that we have them. So folks, if you sign up for the f the free tr trial, the full trial. Two weeks, no credit card required, nothing like that, no upsells or anything other than I will hassle you every day to come in and practice. But uh, the member login over here, we're going to go here. You'll have a login to this here. You're going to go to resources and get starting orientation. And then uh, someone asked over on YouTube about the brick size. So that's from the Futures Fanatic cheat sheet for Ninja. So let me put that in here. 
the brick sizes are listed right here. Order filled. Uh, Order filled. So they're listed right here. Um, so you have that there. So I'll put it in here and I'll put it in here over on YouTube. And then if you want to know how to do your setup for the trading view, for the trading view, this is for trading view and you just walk through this and it'll tell you how to set up your, your chart with all the uh, indicators and everything necessary. The extreme turn is the one that's not included. That's a member indicator. The only one that's a member indicator. It's just too damn powerful to give it away for free. Too damn powerful. All right. New high on the NASDAQ again. Order filled. New high for the Dow again. Best right now to just be sitting out, folks. It, the, the pullbacks really aren't uh, big enough to get long. If you already had a long position that you were trading around and you add to it on pullbacks, that's awesome. That's working really well right now. But other than that, you just dance in between the raindrops to try to keep your shirt on relative to any short positions. But it's actually a really good session to, to sort of show graceful exits, take off any little movement, counter trend movement when it comes to being short. Uh, I'm now flat over here uh, on top step X, so I'm not going to do any more trading on top step X. Uh, $156 across whatever it is, five accounts, I'll take it. And then I just like to check real quick to make sure that it did do, it did de indeed get copied, which it did. Can the Dow hit 40K? Sure, why not? 50K, 50K and beyond. All right, do I have any discounts running for my membership? All right, Brad, I'm gonna put your email here and on YouTube. So Brad at Traders Dev Group for membership questions. So email him. All right, let's fire off any more questions you got because it's straight up 12.30, 2.30 Central and I've had enough. That's about enough for today. Awesome. Okay, one last thing. I'll just remind everybody that uh, the password green beer will work for the rest of the week. And we reconvene tomorrow at 8.15 Central, 6.15 Pacific, 9.15 Eastern. And you can come in and uh, do that for the next two weeks, the next two days. Uh, if you haven't really done a ton of trials, try not to do a ton of trials. But if you, know, you want to try to do one again and you haven't done it in a little while, you can come over to tradersdevgroup.com and hit try TDG and sign up for a trial that will get you access again to the password for next week and for two weeks from there. I know that there's a number of people that um, have already done a, a decent amount of trials. So if that's the case and you just know, you already know what the service is here and you're not able to financially participate at this time, just don't do that. But if you're newer to this whole thing or you're just finding out about what we do, by all means go over there and try TDG and I'll remind you guys tomorrow and Friday on that as well. I'll leave you with this, that uh, this outside day up, maybe they fade it, maybe they rocket it again, who knows, but we're now at 55, which is the expected range for the day. That's our ATR is 56, 57. So we've now put in the expected range. You can also do some rule of projection highs, which is all covered in the workshop. You can find out more about that. 
Um, but regardless of the outcome of today, tomorrow, especially if we come in a little bit and don't close on the absolute highs, will be nice in the sense that we'll have you know more range expansion, more things to work off of, all that good stuff, yada, yada. All right, everybody, that'll be it. Stay green, trade like you mean it. Thanks for those that were over there on YouTube. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, last thing, this is the last thing. Uh, here in the trade room, remember, click the la the open sidebar, the three little lines over there. Go to archives recordings and you can watch the last 10 recordings. If you want to end up, if you ever end up becoming a member of our group, know that at, by this time now, we already have more recordings than you could possibly ever watch. Um, I mean, it's it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So you can just randomly go back to any day and just watch watch those sessions because all we do every day is reinforce the exact same thing. If you've had a good day or not a good day and you're a member, if you can please come in here and share some of your P&L, just keeps people motivated so they see what you know what we're all about in here. Just throw your P&L in there. And I'm just randomly pick thing. That's the TDG way, gang. That that's it right there. Not not like we appreciate. Uh, I love every time Art and some others show their numbers because we have some superstars in here that are putting up massive numbers, and everyone's mileage is going to vary. There might be a lot of people that will attain an amazing ability to manage risk, but never really have the personality to have that much size on to put up those kinds of days. You know, find your own lane. Find your own find your own groove. I would suggest that what you're seeing on the screen right there is enough to complement and supplement the income of a lot of people. If you did that relatively consistently over the course of each trading session, understanding that the only thing you consistently have to do is not lose money. You don't have to consistently make money. You just can't consistently lose money. If you don't consistently lose money, then the profits will take care of themselves. All right, that'll be it. Stay green, trade like you mean it. Thanks everybody, be good, bye-bye.